piece of article that I have read has been this young. And she said that why is a woman's uh, independence and liberation measured in relation to that of a man? So the more man she is, the more human she is. The more men, men duty she can perform, the more human she is. And the less men duty she performs, the less human she is. So if she comes out in the workforce, if she drives, if she can become the president, if she, then she is a human. Now she is on par. Why, why are we measuring her to a man to make her a human? She has her God-given privileges. She has her Allah-given privileges. Measure her to that which Allah has given her. Why are you judging her with it? Why is the yardstick a man? What makes a, what makes a man the yardstick? So if a man did it, then if she does it, then she's a bit more liberated. She's so much more liberal. But then the irony of the whole liberation is, the irony of her independence is, that when my sister boards, sister is in a broad context, any woman for that matter, boards the flight and she is the cabin crew, and she presents a platter of food with a smile in a seductive way to a strange man, then she is progressive. She is moving with the times. Broad smile, cabin crew, flying from here to New York, flying from here to wherever. But that same sister, if she presents a platter of food with love and passion to her respected husband, then she is retrogressive. Then she is moving backwards. So if she presents that platter of food to a strange man, She's moving with the times. But if she presents that platter of food to her husband, then she's outdated. We call upon the woman of today to cherish her motherhood. We call upon the woman of today to cherish your motherhood. Apart from the fact that we debate, you're coming into the working force. Let us tell you, sister, once you've left the house, nothing can substitute your position. Nobody can substitute your position in that working environment. I mean, you know, we, 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 we're moving into a situation, like I said, that everything of a woman is becoming a man. Typically, we might get a Mr. Mum one day. We might get a Mr. Mum. You know, that, that is the way it's moving. Man and woman into one. So what else are you going to say, Mr. Mum or what? I don't know. You know, or, or maybe there might be a robot that will be then designed as the time. But nothing but nothing can substitute. Nothing can but nothing can substitute and fill the position of a woman at home. A child is negligent. The house is unattended. The food is not prepared. The house is a house and not a home till a woman walks in there. It's a house without a woman. Believe me, it's not a home. It's a home if our sister is there. That is the honor of Allah, and she is a queen. Say what you want to, you live in a palace, but if there isn't a woman in that house, it's deserted. And you live a hut also, but if you walk into a house where there is a woman, wallah, it's a palace. Wallah, it is a palace. The house is a house with a woman there. That is, that is the honor Allah has given her. There is nothing that can beautify a house like one woman can. And then there is nothing in a house that can deprive, uh, that can, like they say, money can buy a house but not a home. Money can buy bed but not sleep. We have insomnia nowadays. Uh, insomnia. So you see research on this and you see articles on this. You know, I just like to read it in the in-flight magazines. It's the only time I read about this insomnia and whatever else is happening. And um, that's about now you see the fitness on board, fitness, and people are turning and turning their heels in this direction, and someone doing this, and someone pacing up and down, and then uh, just so that you can't sue them if something happens to you again. This is the reality of the world in which we are moving, you know. These are the times that we are moving with, and we're just accepting it, and we've become immune to it. So the third phase is Zina. يَعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبٌ وَلَهْبٌ وَزِينَ Adornment. So Aisha رضي الله عنه puts on this beautiful garment, and that is where we digress uh, from that point. So Aisha رضي الله عنه puts on the beautiful garment, and, uh, you know, she is looking at herself, she feels impressed. It's, it's, it's women. Some women, they, get, they feel offended if women don't tell them you're looking beautiful. So they feel so nasty of her, she couldn't even say, I'm looking mashallah. 
Alhamdulillah, my sister, don't worry, your husband will tell you. Huh? <laughs> and he should tell you. That is the teachings of Islam. He should tell you. You should beautify yourself for him. And he should, as Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu said under the commentary of this ayah, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلِلْرِجَانِ عَلَيْهِنَّ دَرَجَةً I swear by Allah, I take pride in adorning myself for my wife just as I like her to adorn herself for me. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said that. Who said it's contrary to piety? The father of tafsir. Nobody understood Quran better than Abdullah ibn Abbas. So, it's, it's both-sided. We've got to respect her wishes, obviously within the parameters of Sharia. That is important. Otherwise, a man insists on his wife to take off the hijab, and she insists on him to dress un-Islamically, then there is no compromise. Then there is no compromise. You telling her, I want you to walk like this celebrity, and I want you to talk like this woman. Then obviously that is un-Islamic. But commonly to accommodate, to accommodate, you know, your husband has a choice for this, your wife likes this here, she has a passion for this, she wants you in the house to use this, to wear this, to dress like this here. Do it, do it. Respect her choice just as you want her to do it. So that is the beauty, you know, of, of Islam and that is the message. Nonetheless, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu looks at Aisha and he says, and subhanallah, these are, you know, words of, 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 of thought, food for thought. He looks at Aisha and he says, مَا تَنْظُرِينَ يَا عَيْشَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيْسَ بِنَاظِرٍ إِلَيْكَ Oh my Aisha, what are you admiring of yourself? Because I can tell you this much, Allah is not admiring you. So she says, what is it? I think it was the Prophet ﷺ told her. I stand on the correction, Abu Bakr or the Prophet ﷺ. So she says, O Nabi of Allah, what is it that the, what Allah is not admiring me? So the Prophet ﷺ said, don't you know, when a person puts on any clothing, and then becomes impressed, becomes impressed. And those are the key words which I spoke about previously. That you consider yourself superior because of what you own and wear and dress and drive. Then, مَقَتَهُ رَبُّهُ حَتَّى يُفَارِقَ تِلْكَ الزِّينَ Then Allah shuns such a person until he or she forsakes that pride. Until that person does not give up that pride, Allah leaves that person. Aisha was the Aisha who grew up in the lap of Abu Bakr and then nursed in the house of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She took out that outfit immediately and she gave it in charity. She took it out immediately and she gave it in charity. Now you know if you bought something with pride and with an obsession and with a desire and then after you spend so much money and then someone tells you that you know, uh, I've given the common example today a person buys a simple candy, a simple candy and then he's about to eat it, and you tell him, brother, there is a haram ingredient in it. So he says, oh, okay, never mind, I finish, buy it this time, next time I won't buy it. <laughs> next time I won't buy it. Next, no, no, drop what's in your hand, what next time I won't buy it? So you can't drop a candy while my mother Aisha drops a uniform. You can't drop a simple thing like that, that it's in his hands and says, you know what, that's doubtful. Today's Muslim cannot drop it. He's got to drop it immediately. That is Iman. He drops it immediately. This is unlawful. It's, in, it's not correct for me. Now we say, no, I finish by it. Now, next time I won't. Subhanallah, you know, where is Iman? So Zinatun, you know, adornment. So you will find a youngster will spend hours at the salon. He will spend literally hours he will spend double, if not much more money to go and take a haircut. You know, I told you previously what are my sentiments on those haircuts and how they look. I'd rather be polite and just pass the topic and carry on. <laughs> spend hours and invest money. And let me tell you, so many youngsters, Allah gives hidayat, because of that they don't make sajda properly. So many youngsters don't make masah of wuzu properly. So, you know, if you may see me, then it is as, you know, very gentle, very, very gentle, just barely passing over, as I'm doing with my hands now, you know, and that's also 